Hi everyone, welcome back to Useful Genetics. This is lecture 1.0, where we're finally getting back to talking about genetic variation in populations. We'll talk about alleles and genotypes in individuals and populations, and we'll consider kinds of DNA sequence differences, because most of the analysis I'll be talking about is built on looking at sequence differences. We'll talk about how we compare DNA sequences and we'll think about allele frequencies and genotype frequencies specifically in populations, introducing some new terms and a new concept, the concept of a haplotype, which is a, a kind of genotype. Now, we'll start by considering a position somewhere in the genome in the DNA sequence. And I've shown this initially, showing both strands with bars indicating the base pairing, but we don't need any of this because we know the conventions that when we see a single sequence of a single strand of DNA, that the left end is the five prime end, that the complementary strand would have the complementary sequence. We don't need to show any of this. Now let's think about genetic variation. How many different alleles are possible at this one position? Well, four alleles are possible because there are four bases. You could have an A or a G or a C or a T. What about in a person? How many different alleles could one person have? Well, a single person could only have two alleles because they only have two versions of the sequence. Now, how many different genotypes are possible for one person? If we're just considering they can only have two alleles, let's just consider the alleles A and G. In fact, there are three different genotypes possible for a person at any one position if we're just considering two alleles. And I'm now going to introduce two new terms, which we'll be using quite a lot in the future. And so a person, considering two alleles, the person could have two copies of the identical allele. So they could have two A's, one from mom, one from dad, or two Gs, in which case we would say they were homozygous at this position, this locus, either homozygous for A or homozygous for G. Or they could have two different alleles, in which case we would say that they were heterozygous at this position. Now let's branch out and think about the same position, but this time we're thinking about a population of people. How many different alleles are possible? Well, again, there's only four bases, so there's only four alleles possible. How many different alleles could the population have? When we had a person, they could only have two, but the population could certainly have all four alleles. How many different genotypes would then be possible in the population? Well, with four alleles, we can make a lot of combinations. In fact, there's 10 different genotypes that would be possible just from the four different bases in a population. Now I've got two questions for you to answer. How many different alleles of a gene can a population have? And notice that, again, this is a question with square answer boxes. So you can check more than one answer if you think that's correct. 